There's a couple things I'll um, obviously I'll open up to questions real quick. Just kind of an update, kind of where we're at. Obviously, we're in phase three in our OTAs, um, which is we take here as a teaching and, and development stage. And more passing you'll see. We're, we're, we understand we're trying to build up the training camp, and there's a lot of fundamentals that we'll be working out there so you guys will see today. So it's not – and I know everybody wants the – the hot takes, and we're going to be plenty of competition when we get into into camp in late July. But that's what we're doing. We're trying to get everybody ready to go, build them up, so we can be in the best shape we can physically and mentally going into camp, going into camp. I also understand that there's the attendance. It's a big deal, out of it. guys. This is voluntary. I'm saying that, but I'll update you on a couple of things. Not going to go through a full injury report, but just where guys are at in the program. Key Smith. Got something you know cleaned up. Should be ready to go for camp, but Keith's you know doing his rehab. Uh, same thing with Deion Jones. Had something cleaned up after season. He won't be out there. He he is uh, rehabbing. Same thing with Vincent Taylor, who's somebody we signed. It's coming off of, of, of a surgery. So other guys, different spots, return to play. Uh, may you know do some light work out there, and that's Auden Tate, Austin Trammell, TQ Graham, Nick Kudakowski. Uh These are minor things. You know, they'll be doing some, some work with us, some not. Just kind of just kind of giving it out there for those who like to check the roster, D-led. <laughs> so other ones, too, guys coming off of, you know, other offseason injuries, John Fitzpatrick, Isaiah Oliver, different return to play, Eric Harris, Tease Tabor. You'll see those guys out there in some capacity. And then, like I said, it's voluntary, and I respect that. We don't, we don't guilt trip here. Coach guys that are here, we need guys that – we got a lot of pros on this team that have different reasons, and, and that's real here. So it is voluntary. Guys that communicate that we think have uh, had a good spring, Casey Hayward, Damian Williams, uh, Cordell Patterson. So just to answer those questions about any, you know, where guys are, guys like to, uh, and everyone loves to look, look at the, uh, the hot take, who's not showing up. If I missed anybody, I apologize. Uh, Bassey can follow up if you're out there on the field. Group where Hayward, Williams, and Patterson in? Voluntary, just family things, things that, yeah, which is voluntary. And those guys are great. They communicate. Uh, they're real pros. Any other questions? Yeah, Coach, uh, you know, given, given uh, you know, everybody that's here, what are some of the goals and objectives or how things been going in the OTAs if this is the last one of the week, I believe? Yes. Uh, we feel – Great about our offseason. I know everybody is very optimistic. Uh, spring, post draft, but uh, we've got a we've got a great good group out there. It's a fun group to coach. We got a hungry group. A little bit of chip on our shoulder, and that's a good thing. These guys, we have a lot to prove as a team, and we're building towards that. And we know we're not in real football uh, competitive team stuff right now, but we're building, and, and guys are we're trying to enhance our fundamentals and really the mentals especially with the young guys that are learning stuff for the first time. In timing up the passing game, how intricate can y'all get with that? Yeah, game? well, you could do a lot of that with seven on seven. It won't be collisions. It's not what we want. It's not what the rules are anyways. But we're trying to – it's really kind of bringing stuff to life. You know, the spacing and your drops and your zone drops, your communication and your, and your, and your man coverages. And then offensively, obviously, we talked about this, the timing, the spacing, really that trust, that chemistry you try to build. You understand there's not like a live pass rush, but those are things that you try to work on and enhance right now this time of year. You said this is a teaching and development stage. What's that mean for, uh, for Ritter, who's coming in to play, you know, the most difficult position of the field? Yeah, there's a lot. And so it's a good question. So obviously this is a new offense for him. And Dez is a very bright young player. And handling it, but what we're trying to do is catch all those guys up. They're all coming from different offenses, and it's just kind of, all right, here's our language, here's how we're teaching things. Get on the same page so it's familiar. So you get those reps over and over again. So when it is live and we can go compete, you feel like he's further along in the playbook. So we'll get some live seven on seven, but again, there's a lot of variables that are out there. Guy may run, you know, maybe short on it, may look bad. That's why we don't overreact, especially in the spring when we're doing seven on seven. Uh, but we'll bring him along like we will a lot of these rookies it's really good to get them up to speed when they go into camp. What's your expectation when it comes to Marcus Mariota and being maybe a mentor to Desmond Ritter? Do you expect that, or does that? Well, I think that, I know that's a, that's another hot button issue going around with. But look, all these guys. This is a very competitive league. Uh, there's a lot of 
great players in this league. They're teammates. They're, they, guys are competing every year for their jobs. I mean, that's the nature of the business. We understand the contracts when you invest, but you've got to create those habits. It's a tough profession. And I got a lot of respect for Grady Jarris and Jake Matthews that continue to push themselves at a high level and work there. So everybody every year is competing for their job, players and coaches. You know, it's, it's what have you done? But we know what we signed up for. So, look, there's a lot of good teammates. I know a lot of those hot takes get uh, taken for more than what, what they are. But my experience in the National Football League is, is most of these guys are, are they're great teammates, help that they also know they're also trying to get ready for their job too. And you, you can do both, and most guys do. And I know things have been taken out of context in other places. But in our, in our room, Marcus is, uh, is here. He's competing for a job. He's a good teammate. And you got to have the right people in that room so it's not toxic. Charles, you, um, <clears throat> you've used the term several times, including once already today, about guys coming in with a chip on their shoulder. Marcus wasn't here last year, but for other reasons, do you think he has that same level? Sure, he's his own guy. I mean, you know, Mar Marcus is, you know, that's why you, you like about certain players. He's authentic. He is who he is. He doesn't try to be anybody. We're not asking him to come in here to be Matt Ryan or to, to be Peyton Manning or be Marcus Mariota. That's what, we, that's what we want. He's also, I think, everybody, you get, when you get another shot at something, there's lessons learned, and there are hard lessons. And if you take them the right way, you're more appreciative of the opportunity. And uh, it's been fun being around him again, uh, not just as a player, as a person. He's one of those people you, you enjoy being around, and he's doing a good job right now, what we're asking him to. Josh? Matt Ryan was such a force here um, for, for 14 years, and, and clearly the leader of, of this offense. Marcus just doesn't come in with the same kind of, in that same kind of position. Does somebody else have to? Step into that role. Does that role have to be filled? Do you let it organically sure. happen? Yeah, you got to let it organically happen. You can't force it. This has become phony. Matt, who he was, Matt had his own style. In certain years, he may have done more or less. Um, and mo most quarterbacks, they got to be themselves. Where you get in trouble is when guys go in there and somebody's told them, some guru has told them, you know, act like this, and it just it's not authentic. It's like if I came in here and tried to act like some other coach or emulate it. Um, you know, if I, if I just hijacked Pat Riley's look, I, that wouldn't look very authentic. So I don't know if I could pull that off. Um, maybe, maybe. So if it, it happens, you, you guys can probably take shots at me for an identity crisis. But you've got to be yourself, right? So same thing we ask the quarterbacks. Leadership comes in all different ways. It's a good question. You know, different points of their career. But who, Marcus, all those guys out there, Leaders, good leaders will emerge, and they'll do it in their own way. Do you find that you're different on the practice field because you don't, as the offensive coordinator, because you don't have a 14-year vet at quarterback, you have to step in? Well, I'm the head coach. Different. We, we have an offensive coordinator. Dave Ragone does a terrific job, and I'm a head coach. So, so I understand what you're asking, the being the play caller. But, yeah, i got to run the whole team, too. And that's why you have to have a good staff, and you've got to be able to delegate, and you've got to set the tone for the whole team. So I, I'm involved in every aspect because – the job I was hired to do was be a head coach. And you can be a good play caller. You don't have to micromanage as a coordinator as well. That's why you, you, we've got good people. We've got a terrific staff. Um, but with the way you coach players, we're fair, but it's not one size fits all. There's a certain way that guys I've coached in the past that, you know, you try to find different ways to, to enhance and push best you, best you can to fit their personality because not everybody reacts the same. So it is different. Is that what you're asking, Josh? Well, I, I was asking, do you find yourself just doing more when you work with the offense because Matt, just as because he was Matt Ryan, took care of a lot of you just handled a lot of stuff. Look, there, there's there's so many misconceptions about that. There's so much mythology out there. I mean, hell, I, I've seen people think that quarterback. Most people now they package plays, and a quarterback like, oh, he audibled it. No, it's, no, it's a package play. Right. Like there are some things where you get certain looks, and you have quarterback that can wipe the, you know, the slate clean if you, you know, but you. Usually you've, you've worked that and practiced it. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of mythology, especially at the quarterback position. Um, so, look, it, it's, you know, these whole things, it's like the, it's always laughable to me too, you know, when guys want to get the misnomer, this guy's a, a coach on the field. Maybe or not, you know, some people love to put perceptions out there. Same thing with the quarterbacks. Like, guys are themselves. Certain things you may have to lean into, lack of experience or something like that, but, the really good teams, good offenses, you got those leaders emerge, and sure, you hope it's from the quarterback spot, but you can get it from other spots too. Reggie, back up. Coach, we often talk, I mean, 
You've talked about it a bunch. We've seen players talk about it. That chip on your shoulders to add to it, but more about the team. Is that something that you're kind of driving into them that they need to have a chip? On we don't have to. They all have anyway. Well, for most of us, yeah. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing. It's not bravado. It's just what it is. We got guys here that are young, want to prove. We got guys that that are hungry to, you know, that are that were here last year that want to improve, and build off the good things, and fix the the, the issues we had, and. Uh, and we, and we we got veterans here on one-year deals that want to prove themselves. So I think it naturally happens. It's a good question. Um, in your opinion, what's the overall misconception of kind of the outside looking in of what OTAs provide to all? Well, I think as a coach, you got to understand the rules. You don't want to do dumb things and, uh, you know, and, and put your team in a bad spot and, Whatever, and there's a lot of methods, and then there's a lot of great coaches. And this makes it fun. It makes it fun as a the strategy behind it, as you try to plan what's best for your team, and you, you try to learn from others, and you may pay attention to what other people are doing and see if it's a good idea. You could steal, but OTAs aren't real practices. And I think I think sometimes I used to joke that you can sit there and, and overvalue uh, some in the moment evaluation, I used to call it the king of spring. Say, hey, this guy's the best player on the D-line. It's like, well, you're, you're not in pads. There, there's different speeds, and guys are you know, jerk pulling, and you know, it looks great like he's winning, and you think you got some pass rusher, and you put the pads on, and you're like, where is that guy again? So try not to, to overreact in that regard. Uh, take it in perspective and not overreact to like evaluations there. Um, report that Avery Williams is moving to running back. Can you kind of speak to Sure. Um, yeah, just a chance. Uh, he's a valuable position player, assuming that he can go win the return job again and, and build off some of the stuff, especially he did late in the year. Uh, we think there's a place for him. He helped us out in a jam last year, had to go in there and play play inside and slot in the, at the nickel spot for us. And that's a tribute to him and, and his football intelligence. And we think there's, there's possibly a spot for him on offense. And it's not fair to him to keep moving him back and forth. And last year, we brought him along. Expected him to be the returner. He was. Uh, he, he gave us more snaps than we anticipated because of injuries on defense, and he's a good team player. And so we thought as a staff, let's, let's try him on offense and see what he can do. And that's a very valuable position because if he can do that, he can help you there. And then in a, in a pinch, he can go right back over to defense and, and bail you out. Uh, and we get to talk to you a little bit uh, after Grady signed his extension. What kind of leadership does he provide, you know, in the during these kind of times? And also, do you hope it, you know, sends a message to the team his belief in, in signing an extension here? Well, you know, we try to reward guys like Grady who who have the right behaviors and habits. They have to be able to, to produce, right? I mean, it's you still have that. You love the intangibles, but you still got to be the, the minimum job requirement if you're gonna. You know, pay somebody that contract. I think Grady, what I appreciate about Grady, he's the same guy every day. Comes in here, and it's those habits that you hope people try to you know, pick his brain on. All right, Grady, how have you had this success? Why are you still playing at a high level? What are you doing? So I think it naturally, you'd be very smart as a young guy to watch what he does or what Jake does. Uh, slightly different topic. How is Kenny Chesney? Any good stories with that? Um, well, at least I, I, I don't think I got booed. I didn't hear any. And maybe that's, that helps at the end when people maybe have been overserved. Um, so that was a plus. Uh, it was cool. Um, like there's a lot of, I got an eclectic musical taste and I got appreciation for a lot of artists. And uh, it, was, it was a cool event to be at and happy they asked me to come on and, and sign the helmet. Uh, over the last couple of days, I'm just wondering if it's been hard for you at any point to focus on football given uh, what happened in Texas and the fact that you're a dad of three. Well, it's uh, ironic you bring it up. I was going and I will say something at the end. I'd like I'm gonna. I, I don't want to distract from. Oh, oh, y'all came up here to do a job, and I will say something there at the end, if you don't mind. But I, I, I wanted to make sure I didn't want to start with it, and, and you can fact check me, Bassity, because I appreciate the jobs that all of y'all do, and I wanted to give you that time we're here, and I didn't want to hijack that conversation. But I will say something there at the end. Oh, well, there you go. So you got to the end. So essentially, you know, I'm not going to get in some political rant. Uh, there's part of me that probably thinks our political process is broken on both sides. It's been hijacked by, in my opinion, extremists. 
And I think there's a lost art to compromise. And, and like, again, I'm an independent thinker. I appreciate everybody's opinion. I think there's a lost art of debate. But again, I'm, I'm going to stay out of the political side because that's not why I'm concerned. It's more you brought up as a parent, as a father, husband, uh, son, and really a concerned citizen of the community in this country because I believe in the people of this country. And I think it, it would be, it, it's a shame as leaders, and I, again, I don't care about your politics, but as people that care about this community that you can't find a compromise solution to keep military grade assault weapons out of the hands of mentally ill people. And I'll leave it at that. Appreciate your time. Thank you.